the channel. And this video is going to be going over six amazing features of Avid Media Composer, the primary editing platform for film and television around the world. Now, this video is primarily going to be targeted at existing users of Avid Media Composer, since this video will be highlighting features you may not have come across in your work, as I stumbled across them on jobs at various points in my career and just really wanted them pointed out to everybody because they are awesome features and everybody should see them. So, Without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Hope you enjoy it and, you know, give me that like and bell. So, we all know Avid's lovely Timecode generator tool. It lets us show Timecode burn ins. We can show, change that to source. We can show the source clip name, whatever else we want to show. We can show here, right? But did you know that you can use this to show custom metadata that you have entered into Avid? Say if you're in your bin, I'm going to add a custom column of say, AE notes. Now we're going to pretend for the purposes of what we're doing that this shot down here is out of focus. And type that in my AE notes and then I can of this bin for now. Shut it in there. Then within my time code generator, I can create another display which will show source bin column. And then instead of showing one of the pre designated metadata fields that we have here, you know, name, lab role, things like that. If you select this one here called custom property, this little entry box appears. You can fill this with the new with the name of the new metadata column that you made, in this case e notes. And as soon as you enter that, our metadata from that column appears. And then you can put that inside your mask somewhere, nice and tidy. And that's reading that on a per clip basis. And you can use this to show all kinds of metadata, whatever you like. Uh, it's particularly useful for reviewing visuals, for example, for reviewing visual effects shots. You can tag the shots on import on what stage they're at, whether they're LRC or layout, previs, whatever. It's just a really great feature that will come in really handy a lot of the time, particularly showing all, any, any and all kinds of metadata. Now this can also be used for metadata that you've added to a sequence. On a previous project, I have used this same method to generate ID boards by populating metadata columns in the bin with information like duration, codec, things like that, and then my ID board auto-populates. Now this next really awesome feature in Avid is if you want, say you have a clip on a higher or lower video track and you want to move it to a different one, and you don't necessarily want to click and drag with the segment tool or engage the segment tool in any way, you just want to move it up and down but keep it in exactly in sync. Now, if we select a clip, I think by default this is actually mapped to the up and down arrow keys, but it is in the command palette, so you map either way. There is move up and move down. So you can just move it around, and as you can see there, when you move it through a track that already has media on it, it won't erase that media, it will just like float over it to go to the track below. Now, say if I left it on this track and settled there and then start moving around. It has overwritten what was there before, if that was what you chose to do. But while you're moving around, you've, you've got the option to leave it anywhere you like and you're not going to do that. Now super amazing feature number three is to do with selecting clips on our timeline. Now as you can probably tell from this example, I really love colour coding. Uh, I've got a few different methods of color coding in this example. I believe it's broken down by scene. Now, what I'm going to do here is, as you can see, the clips from this scene are kind of intercut throughout this end section of this short film. What if, for example, I want to batch delete those clips or I want to lift them all up and export them as an EDL? This is particularly useful for VFX workflows and animation if you want to create an EDL that just has information of specific clips. Um, there's a variety of different methods that you can use for this. 
and the feature in question will allow me to select all clips that are colored the same in my timeline. So I'm going to grab all these kind of peachy orange ones here. So all I need to do is right click and then go to select and then you can go clips with the same source clip color. Now there's a variety of options here. You can select all offline clips, all muted clips. So maybe all your muted clips you don't need anymore. So you just batch select them all and then hit delete. All clips with the same local color if you've been coloring them locally on the timeline. But this is the awesome one that I'll always use. Clips with the same source clip color. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Boom. All of these have been selected. I can move them up and isolate them that way. And then you can see all the clips with that color throughout my timeline are now isolated on a separate track and I can do what I want with them. Now, awesome feature number four. Now we all know about Avid's awesome workspaces feature. Now this is something that's present in most NLEs. You can have a saved workspace with different layouts ready for different purposes. Now by default Avid will give you one for editing, one for color correction, one for effects work and one for audio. I've added a few down here. Uh, this one that I'm in at the moment squishes everything onto my left monitor for the screen recordings since I can't record my three monitor setup at once unfortunately. But did you know that when you're jumping between workspaces you can also have that setting trigger a different keyboard layout? Well if you didn't, here's how. If you jump into your settings window, over to your user settings, now you'll know that Avid, Avid's keyboard customization is down here. Double click, there's your keyboard, you can drag and drop stuff from the command palette into there and customize it however you like. But you can have multiple of these keyboards and then switch between. This little tick box here is the one that's active. So say if I edit the name of this, so editing keyboard, and then say I had duplicate it, and then edit the duplicated one to say VFX keyboard. And then ticking between those will select which one's active. And you can customize these to be completely different and give this a whole bunch of keys solely for VFX work. Now if I scroll down here to my various workspace views and say I want my effects workspace to trigger this VFX keyboard. So as soon as I jump to my effects preset, it'll activate that new keyboard. I just double click on there and then change this to link to named settings. And then any settings that have the following name that I type in here, let's say VFX keyboard, will be activated as soon as I switch to the effects workspace. And don't forget that you can map your, these workspaces to a hotkey. So this means that simply by hitting the key to switch to your workspace, you'll also completely change your keyboard layout to give yourself a whole bunch of tools available for straight for that purpose, whether that be sound work, effects work, color correction. Avid has a whole plethora of different tools for different purposes, and this will let you have access to all of them as keyboard hotkeys whenever you want. Now, say you've joined a project late. There's already a couple of assistant editors there. Maybe you're replacing someone and they've set up a bunch of preset settings that everybody has to enable for the project. Maybe that be export settings or just really handy keyboard layouts to have or even bin settings. You can extract these settings from someone else's user settings and bring them into your own. You don't have to manually recreate them. And here's how to do that. You have your user settings up and then you can go file, open setting file, or just type command O. Then you'll be brought with a finder window. Then you can navigate to where wherever these settings are. So say if the other assistants have exported their user settings somewhere, or you can manually navigate to where they are in Avid. I'm just going to drag the folder in here to jump straight to it. If you select the XML that's in that folder and hit open, it will bring up this window 
which contains all of the other user settings. This is all their export settings, all their bin view settings, everything. Even their list tool settings, their keyboard, their workspaces, everything. Now you can just drag and drop those from their settings straight into yours. So any bin views, export settings, list tool settings, workspaces, anything. You can just drag and drop them straight from their settings into yours. The one gotcha that I would be aware is just make sure that both user settings were originally created on roughly the same version of Avid. If any of their settings are reference their settings or yours are referencing uh, features or functions within Avid that don't exist in either of the other version, uh, it, it could cause some interface issues. But generally speaking, this is a very fast way to grab some user settings that someone else has set up. It's a really awesome feature and very handy on shared projects. The last awesome feature I'm going to show you is a super fast and easy way to link in new versions of a shot. Say you get a whole batch of new versions of visual effects shots. Rather than cutting them all in manually, you can do this with just a couple of clicks and relink all the current versions that are in the cut up to the new version so long as the duration hasn't changed. So what we're going to do, we have this clip down here on the timeline which is called 4 underscore 01 underscore spiders underscore version 6. Now you can see from my bin up here that I've got a version 7 which has come in. So we've got an updated version of this visual effects shot and I've colored the old one darker green and the newer one lighter green just to, just to highlight. So if I select the newer one, and you can do this in a batch, as I said before, and do a bunch of shots at once, just select your newer ones you want to relink to that you want in your cut, and then right click your timeline, go to your relink, change this to selected items in all open bins. That's what we want to relink to. But then also down here, make sure this is selected to tape name or source file name and then deselect match case when comparing source names. And then this is the super awesome feature just here that we're going to use. It's called ignore characters after last occurrence. And all we need to put in there is a V. Because if we go back for a second and just look at how these are named, we've got version 007. So we want to we want it to ignore everything that comes after the V and then just m manually relink to the selected clip. So we're tricking Avid into looking at it as the same thing and just relinking it to it on the timeline by ignoring the version number and the rest of the file name is the same. So I'll jump back and if you watch the timeline when I do this relink here, relink, ignore characters after last occurrence of V, put this up over here and then I click OK and watch this will change boom and then there's version 7 jumped in right there now you could do this with 30, 40, 50 shots at a time and even if 2 or 3 of them might have changed the version or been stretched then you just manually cut in those ones but in a lot of VFX workflows if you're sending visual effects shots back and forth after the edit has locked, then this will save you a lot of time. So that is my summary of six awesome features in Avid Media Composer that you might not have known. Uh, if you'd like to see any more of these videos, or if you'd like me to cover anything else to do with Avid Media Composer, or any other post-production workflows or tips, please just sound off in the comments, let me know, and I will jump right on it and make a video for it. And until next time, I'm the Avid Assistant. And I'll see you later. <laughs>